gentlemen, Dr. John Harrington. Woo! Thank you. How's everybody doing? Well, Woo I'll try it. It's kind of loud, isn't it? I'll turn this down a little bit. Yes, there we go. Okay. I'll find a little feedback. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Outstanding. Um, the folks that did that video were from uh, the South Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce for an event I did. And it's a fabulous video, and I, I love showing that. I'm going to show you my, uh, my journey to the astronaut floor. What I'm going to do today, we're going to build some wires. That's what I want to do. I want to show kids how to build some wires. But before I do that, I want to do a really quick presentation on my journey to the astronaut floor. Because I had a pretty interesting journey to become an astronaut. Can we have another one? Hello? Oh, this is much better. Okay, I don't like feedback. What I want to do is talk about my journey to the astronaut form because I think a lot of people have this vision that to become an astronaut, they decided when they were about three years old to become an astronaut and they did everything in their power to become an astronaut. And I know folks in the astronaut office that are like that. I am not like that. I think the majority of people I work with in the astronaut office were not like that. We all had an interest in aviation, an interest in spaceflight, but through our careers it led up to that period of time. And I had some challenges in my life that I want to share with you uh, in talking about this journey, uh, because I think it's something that a lot of people can kind of take ownership of and go, well that guy's just like me. And if he can do that, why can't I do something like that? That's the story I'd like to tell. Um, I'll do us some pictures, some really fun pictures. That is me, upside down, under the space station. There is no upside down in space. Oh, actually, upside down is what you see. It's not what you feel. Because gravity, though it's tugging at you and pulling you back to Earth, the space shuttle is going around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. And as gravity pulls it back to Earth, Earth falls away. You have this constant free fall around the Earth. So gravity is still there, you just don't feel it. You're just falling. You're falling in the space shuttle. Matter of fact, sitting here in our chairs right now, we're doing about 800 miles an hour. Not right? Together. Because the Earth is revolving on its axis, and sitting here together, we're doing pretty fast. So if we're out there looking back at the Earth, you're going, woohoo! I'll, I'll just sign this one too. Okay. So I was wondering, you're talking about uh, that Sandra Bullock movie. Yeah. And um, when I saw the movie, I thought it was kind it's of like basically, you know, uh, it seems like he's using a can of hairspray to float around the space. Oh. Could that possibly would have happened? You know, the MMU doesn't act that fast. I mean, the MMU has flown before, uh -huh. but you can't fly like that. You'd piss away so much fuel. Oh, that's what I know? pictured. Yeah, it seemed like it was too far it's fast. Yeah, I was just wondering how much research they actually did, you know, for both movies, you know, like, uh, I know they have to add stuff to keep... Uh... Yeah, because, you know, the, if you read the book, The Martian, the book is pretty, it's a good book, but it's a lot of problem solving in it, a lot yeah. of math, you My know. My daughter loves it. Planets, it's just stars. Sure. It's just stars, yeah. So then now, now tack a bunch of planets into that, and then you've got, the, like, for every grain of sand on the surface of the Earth, there's a planet. That's, I can't get those as an inhabited planet. That's yeah, just one, planets, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, Jason, right? 